said I was going to talk about the wants versus the needs. So let's talk about it. Okay, so talking about the wants versus the needs, let me tell you a story about Mr. Head. Uh, this was back in about 1972 or so. And I was, you know, I was like seven years old. And I lived on the last street in the city that abutted the country. So everything out my door was either city on one side or woods and rivers and streams on the other side. So we, in a way, we could, we, could, we could get out and run in a way without on, on one side of the street and on the other side you'd get in trouble. So my, our parents allowed us to run on the woods side. I was gracious of them, I'm sure. But anyway, uh, there was this old guy named Mr. Head. Head, like Mr. Potato Head, right? And he, he would come walking down the road every day, dragging and shuffling his feet. He was in his 90s. And my mom, my mom would always tell us, stay away from that old guy, right? He might be dangerous. And sh rightly so. You know, she should have told us that. But we always was like, hi, Mr. Head, how you doing? And he was, he was always in his own little world. He had brown stained lips, and he, I think he was in his late 90s. And uh, he wasn't chewing tobacco. I don't know what he was chewing. But he looked like he was homeless by today's standards. His clothes were beat up. His, they were holy clothes. I mean, just everything, right? Apparently, they were what he needed. All right? He lived a few blocks from us. And uh, he, he, it, it was a house that in 1910 would have been a nice, you know, cottage, right? But apparently, he hadn't done any maintenance since 1910. And it was in just really bad disrepair. Uh, I mean, just bad. But he lived there forever. Now, when he died, uh, my mom read his obituary and, to us and told us about him, right? Because he had, you know, he had been in all the all the wars and and been a manly man and done all of his things. But he had actually made a fortune in the railroads, and he was a millionaire. And in 1972, being a millionaire, is, even by today's standard, is still an impressive feat, right? And he, actually, when he would come down the road, sometimes he would he would he would throw silver dollars at us, and that was that was funny. I actually still have them silver dollars. Ain't that amazing? But anyway, I know that tells you a lot about me and hold, holding on to, to valuable things, right? So anyway, Mr. Head's dead. He outlived all of his kids. I don't know where his money went, but he was a millionaire. But he never lived his life like a millionaire. At least not the part, not the end part of the life that I seen, and. Having a snapshot of the end of his life, I, you can pretty much assure yourself that he lived his whole life modestly. Now, in today's world, we live differently. We, we want. We all want everything, right? It's like, I need a shotgun and a rifle because I'm going to hunt all the time. Now, I don't hunt anymore, but I still have those shotguns and rifles, right? That's okay because that's something that you may use again. But do I really need 20 shotguns and rifles? Because really, I've that's I've got about that many shotguns and rifles, not not even counting pistols. Do I need all of that? I don't need it all. You know, even if you broke it down into specific categories, you only need if you need because you're a prepper or or, or crazy like me, you you would need a few extra, like a a, a, a long gun for for long shooting, maybe a, a short gun for close encounters, a uh, couple of different kind of pistols. You're, you're saying, saying, right? That's one of my weaknesses is, is guns, motorcycles, and silver and gold. Those are, those are things that I collect in abundance. And at least with the rifles, I can always get a return. If you're of the mindset that you need a new boat, and then you never go boating. Well, you've got a boat, but you didn't need it, did you? I'm of the Dave Ramsey school of thought about about finances. I I really I ran into Dave Ramsey in the well, like '87 or so or '89. I heard him on the radio, and because he was you know out of Nashville on the AM station, he was just a young whippersnapper himself, but. I was like, wow, this guy actually thinks like me when it comes to money. 
and uh, so I, I would listen to him a lot. I actually listened to him so I could listen to the call-in people and the, the, the crazy stories they would have to tell him about. I'll just, now, I'm just going to make this up, but it's stories that I've heard. You know, oh, Dave, we, we've we got, uh, between the my husband and I, we make, uh, you know, $130,000 a year, and our house is... Uh, Four hundred and ninety-five thousand, and and we are just barely making ends meet, and we we lease uh, two two Mercedes and this and that, right? And I don't gotta see Dave to know he just rolled his eyes, right? Because the simple words that's gonna come out of his mouth is, "You need to get out from under that house. You need a house that fits your means." You know, it does. That's what it comes down to, fitting your life to what you earn and not overstepping yourself by once. I want this. I want the pool. I, I, I want to be the Joneses. Uh, I, I, I want my family to come over and think that I'm uh, really successful because I use credit card debt and I've got everything maxed out. A lot of times these people file bankruptcy every seven years. I mean, just like clockwork, they file bankruptcy. I uh, see it. I've seen it in my own family. Every seven years, boom. Every seven years, boom. Every seven years, boom. And that's that's living for the wants and not for the needs. I did file a bankruptcy in '98 when I broke when I hurt my back and and uh, was out of work for so long. So yeah, bankruptcy is a tool to be utilized in in dire straits. And that was dire straits. I couldn't. I couldn't work. But I made sure I never let that happen again. Even even in business wise, you'll hear people say it's a tool. It's a tool of the once though, because you can overstretch yourself in businesses. You see how right now we're going through all these um, trucking companies shutting down. A lot of the companies that are shutting down. It's not just a recession issue, although it's it's propagated with more force by uh, a coming recession. But it's because those companies were built by the granddads and the dads of, uh, of the current holder of the business. And they built them businesses on cash value with sweat equity and some credit. You know, some credit's uh, a good thing. But as the younger kids take over, they go all in because they have big ideals, right? Because when you're younger, you may not see through clear eyes. And that ambition that I talked about in a previous video can get in the way and you overextend yourself in business. Because the bank will certainly let you overextend yourself because when they're counting your, your net value, your net worth, they count things in a different way than what, than what a relator would count it or you know what they're not counting true market value so you can get yourself in trouble and then those businesses like in a recession end up upside down and they and they have to sell off or close their doors because greed is right in there with wants and needs and ambitions and everything else they all go together hell they I don't know why some of that stuff's in the seven deadly sins when some of don't 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 but don't be stupid financially should be be in there but I'm as bad as everyone else right if you I guess you probably could have a, a calculator of of people's idiocy and wants and needs and you can probably use that calculator driving up and down your neighborhood road if you live in a neighborhood or wherever you live and look around and tell because you'll look over at somebody and say, they got a nice house and they got a nice house and they got you know everybody's got a nice house right and they got a nice car you know 30 years ago people didn't have nice cars they they, they drove the the wheels off of their cars and fixed their cars now they just buy new cars and keep paying payments so you're driving through your neighborhood looking at the these houses and cars and everything you have in your head match up the jobs that these people have to their their haves and those haves will usually turn out to be wants wants that aren't needed but now 
they're needed to be paid for. So they've got to work. You, you say, you say some guy's got to. He got, maybe he works for the city, and you know, you know, he you know exactly what he makes. And then, and then at nighttime he's bar, he's tending bar, and on the weekend he's working at shoe carnival. That doesn't build for in a life. How, how how can you live a life, have a life filled with anything other than work? And we wonder. I don't know why we wonder why we die so early and why we eat so badly because we're we're not sitting at a dinner table anymore we're working ourselves to death for the the wants now the fact that I am making this video while driving down highway 101 in Montana in a in a Peterbilt with a 144 inch sleeper with two motorcycles on it may seem very fraudulent and I could I could definitely see that but there there's a difference I've, I've passed I've passed the age of getting myself in trouble with once you know when you can put equity down on something it's, it's a little different and after all my years doing what I do Staying out as long as I stay, this is all, all really a good, good thing. We just entered the boundaries of Yellowstone National Park. Have a look around, and I'll keep yakking for a few more minutes. Anyway, like I was saying, with this super large truck that I have with the bathroom and kitchen and everything, it's a little different. I mean, you they have a formula, and you can... I'm not going to put the formula on here. If you want to look it up, you can look it up. That says that that if you buy a new Peterbilt, it's $180,000 versus buying this, you're only paying about I don't know, like 30 or 40 thousand dollars more for the current truck that I'm driving versus the regular truck because of the, what you save in meals and hotels if you're going to be out for extended periods of time. So an extra, I think it was 35000 was their, their number. Uh, it, that's not, to me, too, too much of a price to pay for the luxury that I live in. But I could do this job just the same with a used truck. If I, if I had a used truck and, and totally went, went through that truck, let's say I bought a used truck for 25000 totally went through it and put another 30,000 in it now I've got a $55,000 truck let's say 60,000 uh, and it's totally and it's paid for right all right I didn't I, I ain't financed because I did it with sweat equity now I could do the same job with this and I would be much more profitable wouldn't I but I still wouldn't have a bathroom when I'm parked on the runway I still wouldn't be able to cook the way I cook although I could still cook but not as well uh, and lavish and luxury. I mean, there's a big difference. And it's 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 not apples to apples. If you know, you gotta you gotta look at your your successes in your life also, and see where you're at. If I was like an, an you know a new driver or, or one with a few year you know five or six years experience, I probably wouldn't run out and buy something like this. So I don't even know how we got onto me on the the, the wants and the needs, because I do because I fall for the same trick in humanity that everyone else does, and I have wants and needs too. I just try to live the majority of my life by the needs, so when there is something I really want, I end up in in good shape, not financing things at a at a higher finance rate or financing more than I need. I mean, I could have got the 168 with the side door and a toy hauler, you know, and all that stuff. But I didn't really need that. But I would have liked it, but I, but I didn't need it. This, is, this particular truck covered my needs. Or I could go out and get a rent and hire trailer and pay $80,000 for it. But the one that I paid $25,000 for fits my needs specifically and not my wants. And I guess that's a good 
good way to leave it. Buy what you need, not what you want. Unless what you want is what you need.